On this channel, I take a look at various Wi-Fi 5 and 6 access points to show what features are available and in some guides I show how to configure them in more detail. And I often like to do a speed test with these products as well to show how well they perform so you have some idea if you're interested in these products of what you might expect when you receive these types of access points. And these access points are great to use in a home network, even though they're typically designed for small business or medium or to enterprise businesses. But in a home environment, these are really great, especially if you have wiring in your house or you are able to run wires in your house, ethernet cables, so that you can power these with just one cable and have great reception and connection anywhere near that access point because you're not relying on a mesh network and you have a wired Ethernet backhaul, that's what I prefer doing because you can place the access points anywhere and you get the full signal strength at each of those locations without worrying about the signal degradation between the mesh network you know, on the wire if you're doing it all wirelessly. So in this video, I have my first Wi-Fi 7 access point that I tested. Fortunately, towards the end of 2024, in anticipation of potential reviewing Wi-Fi 7 units in 2025, I bought a Wi-Fi 7 M.2 module for one of my Intel N100 rack mount systems I built for testing throughput and doing different various experiments and demos and guides that I like to do. So Ingenious has sent me one of their new Wi-Fi 7 models. It's, it's part of their Cloud Light series and it's designed for small businesses and residential customers. And as you can see, it has a very thin, flat um, profile, which is really nice. So it goes really close and tight to the ceiling or wall that you want to mount this to. And on the back, you can see they have this mounting bracket that's universal for most of their devices, except for maybe, maybe the fit line might have a little uh, different mounting system, but, but all their cloud-based models have the same mounting bracket because it looks very similar to the other access points that I have from Ingenious. So on the bottom, on the back, you can see there's like a reset button to factory reset it, and there's a LAN PoE port that's 2.5 gigabit. All the ingenious access points support this DC 12 volts. So if you just want to plug it in with a, just a regular barrel jack adapter, uh, you don't have PoE at this location or for whatever reason, you can just plug it in directly in the power and power any of their access points. That's a good option to have if you, for some reason, don't have a lot of PoE where you need these access points to be located. Uh, most of the time you want to have this like mounted on a ceiling if in an ideal situation or potentially a wall if you want it to be a little more uh, forward directional so, because a lot of times these APs get, they get more signal coming out of the, the front than they do from behind. So it's, you know, it's omnidirectional. It's not the same amount of strength and power in all directions in general for these type of access points. Uh, so I'm not sure what the uh, radiation pattern is on this device. Uh, Unify usually publishes theirs, but I don't know if Ingenious does. But if they, if they have that somewhere, then that it would be interesting to see how much of the signal goes behind this access point, because that would determine how you want to mount it, right? So there might be a, you know, reasons why you want to put it on a wall facing you know, a big open space or something like that instead of going on a ceiling. That's a possibility. The range for this is uh, rated for 1,200 foot radius. So this access point is a two by three by three, which means it has two spatial streams for 2.4 gigahertz and three streams for five gigahertz and three streams for six gigahertz. So uh, it's nice that it has three streams because some of these access points uh, start at like, you know, two spatial streams per uh, radio. So this gives you a little bit extra performance for devices that support three by three spatial streams and so most of your devices that I've seen, especially for home users and stuff, I, I, most of them in general are like two by two devices. But if you happen to have some, a couple of three by three devices, you'll be able to have the full throughput that this is capable of for at least up to three devices. And then once you get beyond that, you know, it's kind of sharing bandwidth even more between the devices. It can be a little bit confusing the way they market these. So the timing that I received this is really great. It's just like a day or two before I received my first 2.5 gigabit PoE switch. So I'll be able to power this access point with that new switch, which I'll feature in another video. So the Wi-Fi module in my test system only supports two by two with the spatial stream. So I won't be able to test the full throughput on this with a single device, but I might try testing a multiple devices on this and see what I get when I test a couple at the same time. But they're not all Wi-Fi 7 devices. So it'll be interesting to see like the performance you know, on the different spatial streams it should be able to get 
pretty good performance on multiple clients. Yeah, sometimes you get a plan in mind and you think this will be great and be nice and smooth. And then you go try to execute that plan and it doesn't turn out nice and smooth. <laughs> well, that's what happened to me when I tried out the M.2 module that I bought several months ago. And so I went and got it and I wasn't paying attention. And I realized when it wasn't working, I was like, why is it not detecting it? It's like, I thought maybe Linux doesn't support the drivers or something like that. Because I, I, when I did some research, you know, Linux doesn't quite support Wi-Fi 7 very well yet. It's still pretty new uh, in the last couple of years. But then I realized that the M.2 module that I got is not a CNVIO module, which is what the motherboard that I have supports, which basically integrates your Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on the same module. I found that there was a M.2 adapter you can put in a normal M.2 slot that you'd put like a normally an M NVMe module and put it in the motherboard. And unfortunately I, for these test systems, I'm just using some old SATA SSDs. So I still had an M.2 uh, module freed up in my system and it worked even in Linux, it, it, it recognized it. But the performance on it wasn't the greatest because I don't think it supports the full feature set in Linux yet. The speeds I was seeing was probably about what on par with Wi-Fi 6 when I was doing it in Linux. And I was like, I think I can do a little bit better than this. So I decided to install Windows on my test system because I only have Windows currently on a virtual machine and I think I might convert that machine back to actual hardware. So with that said, I noticed that out of the box in Windows 11, this module, Wi-Fi module works perfectly and it says Wi-Fi 7 even when the connection, when I went to the information about the network and it even takes advantage of the MLO, which is the multi-link operation uh, functionality of the Wi-Fi 7 access point that I am testing. And I was kind of surprised by that because I didn't realize the module that I bought, the Wi-Fi 7 module actually took advantage of MLO, but I was glad that it did because it allows me to test even higher levels of throughput that I didn't, I haven't seen possible with any Wi-Fi access points that I have tested so far. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna test the throughput of the Wi-Fi 7 client that I have, the only one that I have with that M.2 module that I'm using. And then I'm going to do a speed test with four simultaneous clients. Three of them will just be Wi-Fi 6 clients and along with the Wi-Fi 7 client. I'm gonna see if I can maximize the throughput in that 2.5 gig port that's connected to the switch. Cause in theory, you should be able to get up to five gigabits cause you got 2.5 gigabits in each direction cause it's a full duplex on that physical port. So we'll see if I have two devices sending and two receiving to see how close we can get to maxing out that throughput. Cause I think that technically the access point is rated for throughput that's higher than the max amount of the physical port because you don't normally get those theoretical max speeds with Wi-Fi because of the environmental conditions and then there's some overhead and stuff like that. So let's, uh, let's get started with that. As you can see, we're getting close to almost two gigabits uh, on Wi-Fi, which is pretty insane. I think that's pretty good, pretty good performance. Uh, I was pretty surprised to see this because it's only doing uh, two bands. It's doing the five and six gigahertz band. It's not including the 2.4 gigahertz band, which I'll show you in a little bit. You'll see sometimes the upload is also, you know, gets a little bit low. Sometimes the download gets a little bit low. It just depends. So if I try it again, you'll see that, you know, it doesn't always hold completely steady because it's just the nature of Wi-Fi. You see, now I got 2.1 gigabits. Let's see if the upload works a little bit better this time. Uh, last time it was, you know, 1.4, 1.5 gigabits. And you see here it's 1.7. I've seen it also get like 1.8, 1.9 as well. It's pretty crazy. I can almost saturate 2.5 gigabits on Wi-Fi. <laughs> so that's pretty awesome. So I'm logged into the Ingenious Control Panel so you can see what this looks like. Uh, this is my client, that's my Windows client up here. And you can see that it has a tag on there. This is MLD, which means multi-link device. And so if I drop this down, you can see these two MAC addresses are actually associated with the five and six gigahertz bands. So even there's two different MAC addresses that show up and that's how it can connect to multiple bands simultaneously. So that's pretty cool. Wi-Fi 7 feature is how I can basically double my throughput because whenever I only connect it to just 5G or 6, 6G by itself, I get, I get basically half the bandwidth. If you have a device that takes advantage of it, it's really awesome. You'll see that same device at some point when I first connected to it, it connected to the 2.4 gigahertz. So I turned that radio, radio off just to make sure that it only connects to 5 and 6G. This device that I have only does two bands, so I can't connect to all three at the same time. So if I, if I could connect all three, I could probably get even greater throughput. At some point, I can maybe get a tri-band device. So now I'm streaming four different systems. I did have this a little more evenly split, but then I was trying to push more in one direction than the other, which is why you could see, uh, you know, f coming from the access point, it's, you have 1500 megabits uploading and, and, you know, almost 300 megabits 
incoming downloading to the devices and I was trying to push it and you know to see if I could balance as much as possible but it seems like kind of difficult to do but it seems like it, the aggregate throughput is almost the same as what my maximum throughput was for the single you know Wi-Fi 7 device that was using all of the band so I think I could probably push a little bit more if I had more clients but it looks like yeah, I could push at least two gigabits through this uh, device. Right. I tried balancing the streams a little bit more between the devices, and now you see almost an even split between upload and download. And let me keep refreshing this page real quick and see what we see. Yeah, it's about the same. So it looks like uh, like 1.6 gigabits, 1.7 gigabits, something like that. So the results of running multiple clients isn't quite as interesting as I thought. I was hoping to be it still equals about the same amount of throughput as a single client using all the bandwidth when i finished up this video i received another wi-fi 7 access point but this time it's from grandstream it's a gwn 7670 and as you can see it's it looks similar to like unify products a little bit but it, instead of like you know kind of coming out a little bit on the top it kind of goes inward and has like a little light here and as you can see it's kind of an evolution of their previous generation models which also was kind of concave in the middle and you know you can see the profile is kind of if i can get it right it's kind of similar it's almost exact same size as the previous generation wi-fi 6 model this is the gwn 7660 and this is 7670 because the 7 is wi-fi 7 i'm assuming and this is wi-fi 6 so it's 60. so they name these pretty consistent and as far as their model lines are concerned this is like the entry level wi-fi 6 model this is the entry level wi-fi 7 model and interesting thing about the entry level models kind of similar to unifies u7 Lite, is this does not support six gigahertz in the for wi-fi 7 it's not a requirement to support the gig six gigahertz spectrum uh, so it only does five gigahertz and 2.4 so that, that's what some of these lower end wi-fi 7 models are starting to come out with so that, that way they can kind of target near like 100 us dollars whereas the ingenious wi-fi access points closer to 200 dollars and you know those kind of models are going to be closer to 200 i think unify is equivalent is probably like maybe 180 or something like that so uh you know just kind of keep that in mind if you want a more budget friendly one because even at five gigahertz as you'll see in my speed test after this that is still very very good one thing that's interesting about the grand stream compared to the ingenious one is it has a an extra ethernet port on here a 2.5 gig ethernet port so that you can connect a wired device that's nearby to this access point like you can connect another network switch or uh you know another client device because this second port is not poe so you can't hook another access point off of it it would be kind of cool to be able to kind of you know chain it off there like that possibly although that could potentially hinder performance if if, if it's kind of you know going back to your main switch off the first port you know you're going to have so much bandwidth there but uh, if you need a in, in a pinch having an extra device off here if we have some kind of weird scenario there this could extra port could be handy to have i notice a lot of the grand stream access points and some other brands they also do that as well they they include an extra port on there just so you you know just for convenience if for some reason you need to hook something to this access point one thing i noticed on the back of this i think wi-fi 7 in general runs a little bit hotter than wi-fi 6 it's just higher performance anything is like higher performance higher throughput it's always going to get hotter like it's like that with ethernet and sfp plus and all that kind of you know, those kinds of interfaces but I could tell in the back here they make this kind of ridged, so and it feels it feels like substantial, a little more substantial, like it's potentially like uh, metal as well and not plastic on the bottom, so that you know it can help dissipate heat. Because I, when I unplugged this a little bit ago when I was doing some testing, I could tell it does produce some heat. It's not enough to where I feel like it'd be a concern. But the nice thing is it doesn't have like any fans or anything crazy like that in there because uh, I've seen some access points where the fans like really loud in a wireless access point. And I was like, that's kind of a, a no go for quiet or home network environments where you don't want to hear a fan up in your ceiling, you know, <laughs> in, in your hallway or something like that, right? So now we're going to test the Grandstream's wireless access performance. And keep in mind that this Grandstream is their light model, as I mentioned. And so it doesn't have a six gigahertz spectrum that it operates on. So it only operates on the five gigahertz and 2.4. So we'll see what the performance of this device is. Uh, you know, it's not, I have MLO turned off because it was getting stuck on 2.4 gigahertz not using both channels for some reason so i was getting really slow performance <laughs> but as you can see with this just five gigahertz by itself is giving me about 1.7 gigabits in both directions which is pretty impressive 
considering I'm not even using the six gigahertz spectrum and I'm only using 160 megahertz channel width and not 320 megahertz, which this wireless access card that I'm using supports. As you can see, I can get 1.9 gigabits. Yeah, so as you run it a couple of times, you can get higher or lower speeds. And see the upload's not doing it quite as good this time, but I can get it to be about 1.7, 1.8 as well, uh, if you run it a few times. <laughs> uh, so that's just kind of the nature of wireless, right? It's not completely consistent every single time. So it's good to just kind of run it a little bit, but I'm still pretty impressed with this because uh, you know, even with MLO off, yeah, I'm still getting you know 1.6 to 1.8 pretty consistently. I tested this out on my iPhone, which is an older uh, iPhone which has Wi-Fi 6. I was getting about 8 to 900 megabits, which is still pretty impressive. But considering my Wi-Fi 5 access points, I'm probably getting 4 to 500 megabits at the most, and probably in the 300 range sometimes. And so th that actually would double my performance of what I'm getting currently on Wi-Fi 5. That's pretty much all I wanted to cover for my first Wi-Fi 7 access point that I've got to try out. It's it's neat to see these devices, you know, starting to be more available and more affordable because I know they're pretty expensive when they first came out. And even though there's not a lot of devices currently that support Wi-Fi 7, it's definitely a good future-proof item to to get at some point if you're already upgrading, you know, an older Wi-Fi. You know, I currently have Wi-Fi 5 still in my house, and so my next upgrade for my house will probably be Wi-Fi 7 and just skip a generation, you know, just because I'm already if I'm already replacing some of them when I copy like big files like videos and stuff like that off my phone it, it is nice to have the extra throughput so to me wi-fi fast wi-fi isn't a top priority but as i'm starting to get more iot devices and that kind of thing wi-fi 7 is probably a good investment to make you know because it's supposed to be able to handle more concurrent streams a lot better than previous generations every generation is adding more capabilities in that area so until next time i'm dustin casto and i'll see you in the next video